Hey folks, uh, welcome to Wolfman's Gaming Den. Today we're going to unbox the game uh, Bloodborne Murgo's Loft. This is one of the smaller box expansion packs for Bloodborne, the board game, not to be confused by Bloodborne, the card game. Bloodborne, of course, is based on the video game IP, a very popular one on the PlayStation platform. Uh, this is basically sort of like a, a board game implementation of it. I have another unboxing video where I've covered the unboxing for the base game itself. Uh, and there are a couple of other videos for a couple of the other expansions that I got uh, with that uh, game as well. But in this one, we're going to cover Murgo's Loft very specifically. So as we can see, the expansion is also designed by the same designers as the base game, Michael Chanel and Eric Lang, uh, published by Come On Games. And uh, flipping it over to the other side, uh, we can see that... Uh, do we see the player count anywhere in here? I just want to confirm that this does not add any new players to it and by the look of things it seems like it does not so this is an expansion for the game a rising threat emerges uh, so this com uh, contains a full expansion two new enemies so uh, you're gonna get a bunch of uh, stuff with it including tiles uh, cards uh, action cards boss cards enemy cards uh, and of course a few different minis in here uh, but the important thing, of course, is, and the reason why I uh, chose to have this in here is for the expansion, because I do want to be able to play through a couple of, a few different campaign scenarios in here. So without further ado, uh, the artwork, again, continues the somber look that you can expect from the Bloodborne IP in general. And it looks like they might have used some of the artwork from the video game itself. Uh, but I don't mind that because I'm a fan of the game. So uh, let's crack into it and see what's inside. Uh, first things first, obviously uh, much smaller than the standard size boxes that this comes with. Uh, for reference, I just want to make sure that I compare it side by side with the base game so that you can tell. This is the base game. That is the small expansion. Most of the other expansions actually come in a, uh, will come in boxes similar to this size. Uh, perhaps just not the same thickness, but uh, definitely the same length and width overall. But this is a much smaller one. So just wanted to have that out there for context but let's open this one up for now all right so first things first it looks like we have a location tile of sorts it is double-sided so you have the wet nurses uh, luminarium and Marco's loft itself uh, with different spots it, it does seem to have a different look and feel than the uh, tiles that come in the base game itself, which are a little smaller in size. So perhaps there might be gameplay tweaks on this as well, or perhaps you're supposed to combine this with those. Uh, I don't know at this point, but we'll figure it out as we go along. But uh, uh, this is, I guess, the map tile that comes with the game itself. Uh, then we have a couple of uh, cards for bosses or monsters you can fight with. Uh, again, if you have seen my other unboxings, these will look very familiar because uh, the layout and the content are pretty consistent with what you have there. So you have Margo's chief attendant, and it also says the same. There might be, there is some difference on the text on in here, but we're not gonna go into too much detail on that, but just know that the two sides are different, obviously. And then you have Margo's attendant. So there you go, those are the two cards right there. Then we have a couple of decks over here. So these are your uh, phase one cards. So these might be related to uh, the different scenarios of the baddies you're playing with. So this is Nightmare Shadows. Uh, again, for the purpose of spoilers, I'm gonna avoid opening these because I don't want to spoil any of the campaign stuff for anybody who might be excited to play that. Uh, hopefully, you know, that's something you wanna discover on your own. It looks like there are scots around some of the monsters or the baddies you might be fighting in here. I'm going to quickly move this to the side, examine it to make sure that there is no campaign stuff that I'm spoil spoiling for you guys. And I'll bring this back in a sec. Uh, so we can maybe look at it just from this side. So you obviously have Margot's Wet Nurse the character, but then you have the campaign scenario card in here. So you have Birth of Madness. And it looks like a similar deck to what we saw in the base game itself, the way that it's structured out. It's uh, uh, thick in terms of its content, 
uh, you have the different cards with the different numbers on them. Uh, and just know that you know, potentially you might be putting out specific numbers on certain scenarios or certain actions. Uh, I'll give you a couple of quick second uh, warning. I'm going to flip this over so that we can have a quick glance at what's on the other side. If you don't want to see it, just turn away for a couple of seconds because I'll do this very quickly. Uh, so you have these different things uh, ongoing. I'm not going to verbally call out what's in here, but if you're seeing it, you're seeing it. If not, we're back. So with that, that's that deck right there. And now it looks like we basically have the minis to contend with. So let's open this up. Obviously, uh, minis are one of the key attractions of uh, come on games uh, for anybody who is into that kind of stuff. I'm just quickly working to remove the tapes from the side. There we go. Oops. Looks like we lost one. Found him. All right. We're good. We're good. Uh, so what do we have here? So it looks like we have some sort of a guy with a, a whip of sorts. Hmm. Uh, decent quality. I'm not going to call it great. Uh, I don't know. Somehow just my impression is that the minis in the base game itself were uh, better detailed. But I'll, I'll, I'll let you be the judge. Uh, you can see it for yourself. Uh, hopefully you can make out enough detail uh, on your end. Then we have uh, these guys. These ones I like a little bit more, although again, a little sparse on the details, but uh, hefty, chunkier. So uh, perhaps it just gives off the impression of being a sturdier mini. Yeah. All right. And now the big one. Oh, can we? Yeah, hopefully that's zoomed in enough. Uh, lots of different arms just flailing around with lots of different swords, uh, wings on the back, lots going on, lots going on, yeah. Uh, good level of detail, but I would imagine that painting this might just be a little bit of, uh, a little difficult just given some of the nooks and crannies you need to get your brush into and whatnot. So there we go. That's pretty much what comes in the box for Murgo's Lock. Thanks for watching another unboxing video. Uh, and again, uh, if you do want to check out the unboxing for the base game or any one of the other expansions, uh, including the Blood Moon box or the Chalice Dungeon, uh, there I have other videos uh, up. Check the link down below or just check my channel. Uh, and hopefully you get to enjoy those as well. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.